Nice. Alright guys, what's happening? Welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Bloodborne. Yeah. Almost said Dark Souls 2. Again. 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 I, it's just, I can't get rid of the habit because it was so, it was like a much longer guide. Okay, so now we're going to Canehurst, so I'm showing you right now guys, you need the Canehurst summons and you want to go to the Witches of Bold Lantern where you fought the Witches of Hemwick. Now you get the Canehurst summons in Yosefka's clinic, so... And you have to kill the Witches, otherwise you can't go to Canehurst. Yeah. So, now Canehurst is uh, definitely worth going to, there's a lot of cool equipment there. Um, it's pretty much heaven for a blood tinge build because you get all of your weapons in Canehurst. Oh yeah, pretty much, pretty um, much. Uh, there's also a covenant there, well, a covenant. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it depends on your definition of covenant. Bloodborne yeah, exactly. certainly has a very, uh, a very faint definition. But, you know, that aside, it's still a great place to go to, and atmosphere, and very secret. So, go to this obelisk, and immediately get in this carriage now. You guys need to be careful, so, you need to get to this next lantern. If you die in the process of getting to that lantern, you can't go to Canehurst. If the horse cutscene plays, and you die, you can't go to Canehurst. So, don't die here. If the horse cutscene plays, and the horse somehow dies, you can reload the game and go to the obelisk again and bring the horse back to go to Canehurst. So long story short, get to fucking Canehurst otherwise you can't go to Canehurst. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's a ridiculous glitch and as far as I'm aware that hasn't been patched. If it has, I'll annotate over the video if, um, saying if it has or not, but I'm pretty sure that it isn't. Yeah, so, so uh, right, so this is definitely where we would suggest to come to at this point. Now the enemies inside the castle aren't really that hard, but uh, Logarius can be an so, I'm just a total cunt of a boss. Yeah, he, he can he can go through stages where he's a where he just spams you with his magic. He does it to me a little bit at the start of the fight. He's like spamming his his AOE skulls and shit like that. Yeah. Now another uh, the enemies out inside the lantern might be yeah, tough. That, that's what happens when when motion controls are assigned to the same button as pick up item. Yeah. Thanks from soft by the way. But yeah, right. So the enemies outside the castle are a total pain in the ass. Do not fight the ticks. They're, it's just not worth it. You don't get anything for it. These giant flea things are just fucking ridiculous. Yeah. They have insane. They have like insanely long range jump attacks. And um, their attacks are meant to punish Estus, uh, Estus, blood vials and healing and shit like that. So see when you back off. That's actually a trigger for them to use an attack. So if you do get in a fight with them, just try and get round behind them and then just turn away and bolt, just run. Yeah, now we're gonna pick up the items that are lying outside the castle, but we're just gonna run and get them and just don't just don't die. I mean, like like any other Souls game, running away from enemies is actually really See what I mean? If you try to roll away, they catch you in like a, a counter frame. Like I took the easily twice as much damage from that second jump attack as I did the first one. Yeah. So that was like because I got caught mid roll. So these guys are incredibly dangerous. Um. So just ignore them. Uh, take as many runs as you need to get the items that are here. Don't worry if you lose any blood echoes because you get quite a few in Canehurst. Um. It's it's a pretty rich area. Uh, in terms of like soul packets and yeah, there's a good amount of soul like packets here. Yeah. Yeah. Like the weapons that you get are mainly for blood tinge builds. So if you're not running a blood tinge build, then feel free to sell the weapons for a few extra, a few extra blood bucks. But um, the the first weapon we're going to come up to is right down here. It's the rapier palash. It's a rapier slash gun. When you transform the weapon, it gets a slashing, a uh, light attack move set, and the R2 becomes a shoot. Uh, which is really good. Yeah, it's a really, really cool weapon. Good. You can do a lot of cool shit with it, especially in conjunction with like the cannon, or it allows you to play like Dark Souls and have a shield and still be able to parry with your gun. Yeah, so like you can use your shield, you can block a couple of R1s and then fire off a shot, or you can R1, R1, R2 if your opponent seems like the kind of player who's going to try and R1 through your attacks and hope that they'll connect first. You can time the, the gunshot instead of the second, the, the third, sorry. Now, third R1. while we're here, we should actually mention the Raider Palash is a great weapon for taking on Abritus. So if you are playing a class that wants to use the Raider Palash, then Abritus isn't going to give you a hard time, really. However, yeah. most other weapons you're going to have a... It's going to be a tough fight with Abritus. Um, as long as you've got something that can... As long as you've got something either like the Raider Palash, um, or... If you have a weapon that is particularly good at catching her face, like the saw cleaver or the hunter's axe, then you should be fine when it comes to Abriatus overall trying to hit her, but it's when she goes into your second phase she becomes a hell of a lot more dangerous, but we'll talk about that in the yeah. Upper Cathedral video. But so, Rate Your Palash is a great weapon nonetheless. I think it's better to go as a sort of um, half and half between skill and blood tinge. Uh, now we picked up Ariana's dress there. Um, that's uh, the one the that she's wearing. Dress. Yeah. Uh, so that's the one that the prostitutes wear in Odin Chapel. Yeah, the the Lady of the Night. Maybe yeah. politically correct on YouTube. <laughs> Sick. 
but yeah, just going to the castle. Now, as you can see, we just ran past all those, like, banshee ghost woman type enemies because they're... Yeah. You two shot them with a tauntress and they're really not worth the effort overall, so you may as well just ignore them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's got this. It's got to the point in the guide now where a lot of the things are kind of just... It's You may as well just run past them. Yeah, like, especially in this area because a lot of the enemies are so like are, are so easy to take care of. Now the reason why I'm killing the gargoyles here is that they actually do have a small chance to drop chunks. And, and they have an annoying grab. Uh, they, yeah, they have an annoying grab too and they have a weird scream thing that staggers you. Um, but these guys have a chance to drop chunks. The Tonitrus does quite a good bit of damage against them as well. So to, like any other enemy really. Uh, yeah, pretty much. The torch just sort of mows through the entire game. These guys here are pretty funny. You can hit them with your shotgun and you can blow them over. <laughs> pretty good. I love enemies that do that, like dogs as well. Just yeah. see their body flying into a bonfire or something. It's fucking hilarious. So yeah, moving on. Honestly, the layout for Kanehurst initially seems a lot more complicated than it's going to be. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Eh? Once yeah. you actually get in about it, you realise that it's not that difficult to work out. It's basically just a line, but then there's like one room that loops in on itself and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Which is a shame because you know the level could have had a bit more potential to it. But there we picked up the f one of the few armor sets you actually pick up in like in a in random the world. spot, yeah, instead yeah. of buying it from the store. It's the executioner's set, the set that um, Alfred wears. It's got really good physical defense. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, I think it's got like some of the highest physical defense in the game. Um, it's a very good armor set. It's I don't like the look of it though. Um, and we'll get the headpiece for it later, the gold Ardale, um, yeah. which is fucking ridiculous, but I really wish they put in a sound where it would like bang off the ladder steps. Yeah, that's a video, you should uh, look I that know. one up. Um, but there we got the Evelyn. It's, it's great. Yeah, that's the Evelyn, that's the uh, blood tinged gun of choice. Out damages the hunter's pistol, um, and if you put bone marrow ash in it with high blood tinge, you're likely to one shot people in PvP, as I've done it about maybe three or four times now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you should, if you're going Blood Tinge, Evelyn is definitely the best choice without a doubt. If you're not investing in Blood Tinge, stick with either a shotgun or the basic hunter's pistol because you won't be getting that much damage out your gun. So you may as well not go for the uh, the high damage gun then. So we're looking for this like hole in the window in the corner here and that's the same. No, you told, me there was, you told me there was Quicksilver bullets in here no, and no, then no. you realised it was under the window. Yeah, so remember to pick them up because yeah. it's... A, a bunch of them, but yeah. at this point you just have like so many bullets that it's not even an issue. Um, and in this in this room here, so there's a couple of gargoyles out here, so these guys are really easy to take care of. But in this room here, we're going to come up against um, more of the the weird ghosts, but they scream and what they what they can do is they can trap you, and then they'll like combo you essentially. It's like the uh, the Chithulu's, uh the Chithulu's magic attack that, that paralyzes you. It's like that. So you just want to avoid that. And this is the executioner's glove. Um, it's an arcane tool. You send out, it's sort of like dark bead, um, in a sense, where it sends out like a little shotgun blast of projectiles, which are skulls. They home in as well, which is really cool. They're pretty slow moving, but they are very good if a boss's weak spot in particular is its head and you have high arcane. Um, I've seen a very good video of a guy who took down a uh, defiled dungeon amygdala with just the executioner's glove. Because wow. it only cost like two Quicksilver bullets to use it, so he just kept using blood bullets over and over and over again. Mm. And he just kept popping amygdala in the face and it was doing like 1000 damage a time. So it was, it was really good, really good spell. And so, it's handy just to have as well for like staggering in PvP. But good luck hitting anybody with arcane anything in yeah, PvP. Yeah, arcane is so bad in PvP. But anyway, there we've just picked up a Kinko blood, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, these, those are like the high ranking soul packets, those are the ones that give you the, the most. Anyway. Now, this room that we've jumped into here is like the other side of a wall in the initial room that we were in. This is where we picked up the Evelyn. Yeah. So, so on this... our left is where we picked up the Evelyn. So this is us, like, we've pulled this bookcase back and that lets us go up to the top section. Up here there isn't much, but there is an, um, a wandering nightmare which drops two or three chunks, so definitely get that. And in this uh, box there is a blood, I know there's gem. Yeah, a warm blood. blood gemstone. But that's okay because in Mergo's you picked up the 21.6% blood tinged gemstone which is infinitely better. Yeah. If you don't have two of them though I suppose you can put that blood tinged gemstone in your gun until you go to NG plus and get an all 21.6% uh, blood attack or until you go through a dungeon and get something else. So believe it or not we're actually near almost near the end of Kanehurst yeah, Castle. we're almost finished and we're, we're not even like halfway through this video because what happens at the end of Kanehurst is that you can then, you can ascend, we, at the end of this video we're going to get every single covenant in one run Yeah. because this is the best time to do it because you can do all the covenants 
instead of doing them one at a time. Like we could have went and done the Hunter of Hunters already by going and speaking to Eileen where Amelia died. But we wanted to be Amelia's completely bosses. prepared for her. So. Yeah, because that NPC is like one of the toughest in the game by yeah, quite a good tougher margin. Tougher than a lot of the bosses, to be fair. Yeah, I have more trouble with him than I do the bosses. And um, he's he's like one of the toughest things to fight in the game. So we want to leave him yeah. as late as we can. So we're going to wait till after Kanehurst. So right down here is where the bell ringing woman will spawn. And this is like your point of no return. You can get back onto those stairs there, but once you drop off of this tower right in front of us, once you drop down here, you can't go back into Kanehurst. Yeah. So So that's that's pretty much this is where you're now committed to the boss. Yeah, essentially. So just be careful of these drops because I've actually died here, so just make sure the camera is like completely over you when you jump down. Just so yeah. you're not, you know, falling to your death for an unnecessary reason. Um, there's only two more items in Kanehurst to pick up now, and it's this, and there's uh, Hunter's Marks uh, just before the Ligarius fight. Um, Ligarius has is it equal weaknesses to Lightning and Fire. Oh no, he's, he's, slightly, he's slightly weaker to Fire, but I believe that the Tonitrus does so much more damage anyway than the Saw Cleaver with Fire Paper that his additional bolt resistance won't matter. However, I feel that on the, on the other hand, on this other side of things, um, Ligarius can escape attacks really easily, so I would say using the saw cleaver with fire paper would be the better mm -hmm. option. Simply because you can attack quicker and get a, a bit more hits in. Yeah, like slow weapons can be cleaver. a huge issue for Ligarius actually. Yeah. You use use the saw cleaver if you want to go in and try and get more than like two or three hits in. But if you just want to go in, hit them once, get out and play it safe, then use a weapon with high one hit damage like the Tonitrus for sure. Yeah. Um, but if, if your playstyle is more akin to what Bloodborne, like what they intended you to be like in Bloodborne, which is like in the boss's face constantly and stuff like that, then yeah, the, the Saw Cleaver is the, the way to go. But I'm going to use the Tonitrus, uh, mostly because I know Ligarius is pretty spammy and he's been pretty spammy the last few times I've fought him, so I don't really get a chance to get many combos in. So I'm sticking with the Tornatrice and I think the Tornatrice might out damage the Saw Cleave when it comes to one hits. Uh, but I'm not too sure about that, you guys might be able to figure that out, but I, I didn't test that, I was just too busy beating him down. So in terms of Tornatrice, you can get about two hits in, you can parry his uh, scythe attacks, but honestly he's quite hard to parry. Anyway, a lot of um, the strategy that we can really suggest for Ligarius is just dodge his attacks, hit hit and just get out there really. Yeah. So in this form he's relatively easy and his defences seem to be a little bit lower than when he powers up. Um, pretty much every time he attacks by the way, he will. every time you hit him he will backstep or every time he casts a spell and you're near him he will backstep and he will do like, uh, he'll wave his staff in front of him to put something like that, like an explosive skull in front of his face or there's the other one where like the skull lingers um, in front of him as he hops back and then you're meant to like jump into it of course. Now that is, uh, you just gotta watch out for those attacks. <clears throat> you can parry that by the way, I've parried it successfully quite a few times and I've just not been able to do it today. Um, if you're using a Hunter's Pistol, you're at an advantage over the Blunderbust as well, we should have probably mentioned that. The uh, the Blunderbust has trouble shooting Logarius' sword when he places it in the ground, when he does yeah. that attack where it rains the swords. Now you need to hit the sword to destroy it so it stops raining swords on you. Yeah, the Hunter's Pistol is very effective at doing that from range. As you can see, I did parry him there, but his attack still went through and knocked me back, which was kind of a pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, so if you shoot the sword, it immediately ends the, uh, the, the sword rain attack, which is always, always great. But, but it's a pain. The, the blunderbust has trouble. If you can't hit it with the blunderbust, then what to do is stay locked on it like Arius. He'll plant his sword on the ground. As soon as he lets go of the sword, it's going to move a little. As soon as it moves, lock into the sword, dash in, and go for the R1 on the sword. Don't go in early because the sword has a little AoE when he plants in. Just wait until the sword slides a little, and then you should be able to go in and take it pretty safely. So as you can see, blunderbust not hitting from that range. Yeah, that's three times now the blunderbust has missed, and I've been getting closer with each successive shot. So, like right there, you've seen the sword moved uh, after he let it go. That's your opening to go for it. Because uh, that's when the AoE, when he plants the sword in, would be over. And now, what Ligarius is doing is he goes into a second form later on where he gets like these giant red wings, sort of like a lant in Demon Souls. Um, where he would have like the giant white aura coming up from behind him and shit like that. What happens in this form is that you will not stagger him if you miss the parry. Um, when you shoot him and it isn't a parry, the bullets will just deflect off of him. So he's a little bit more dangerous here, your timing has to be a little bit more accurate. I think he becomes tougher to parry, like the, the window for hitting him becomes a lot smaller. 
and um, so you just got you just got to be careful with that as well this attack as well by the way i figured out that as soon as he jumps up give it about two seconds and then roll towards where he jumped from and you're usually safe <sighs> that one's pretty tough to dodge until you figure out the uh, the timing for it as you can see i fucked it up there because i rolled the wrong way <clears throat> but yeah so there's Ligaris. now the issue is that if you're leveled well enough Ligaris shouldn't be too much of too much trouble because his attacks won't be doing enough damage to really become a massive issue which is essentially what you want if it's your first run through Bloodborne because you don't want him absolutely wrecking you with one hit like he was doing in our let's play where we fought him at a much lower level yeah so what you want to do now is put on the crown of illusions that you get um, from beating um, Logarius, you just walk a little bit closer to the start of the boss arena and you can see the uh, the item drop there. So put that on, it opens up the Vileblood chamber and you can go speak to the Vileblood Queen, join the Covenant and you can go get the unopened summons which we need so that we can give it to Alfred so that we can get the Executioner's Covenant. Now, you don't get anything right, so basically when it comes to Covenants, at least this Covenant, if you, you just need to join it as simple as that and even if you put on a different like Hunter's Emblem like covenant emblem it doesn't matter you don't get out the covenant or whatever but to get there's only one thing you gain from this covenant and that is a gesture, gesture which you need to give her a blood drag for which means you need to kill someone in pvp so if you just kill one person in pvp and give her the blood drag you'll get that one gesture yeah to, the only way to get a blood drag though is you have to wear the veil blood rune oh yeah yeah. you need right. to wear the veil blood rune so what what like, we prefer the Hunter Hunter's rune because it's constant stamina regen, it's fucking amazing. And the Executioner's rune is garbage, it's like a fine 7% increase in your health, your blood vials, who gives a shit about that? Um, and of course the Vile Blood one is like gradual health regeneration at a very, very low amount of HP, it's not even that good yeah. when it comes to regen. So the Vile Blood one's probably the weakest without a doubt, but you need to kill someone to get a blood drag. Give it to the Vile Blood Queen, you've got your gesture, and then that's you pretty much finished with the Vile Blood Covenant. There's no point in collecting a million blood drags to put them into the, the fucking book, because it's already hacked and everybody in it's a cheater. So, <laughs> so what we're doing now is that we're beating Legarius, we went through um, Canehurst, so we've got a lot of soul packets to pop, and of course we'll get chunks, so if you get any weapons left to upgrade, do it. Um, so you have quite a few chunks and you want to prepare yourself for a pretty tough battle that's coming up next. You're going to be taking on uh, a, the one of the toughest NPCs oh, in, easily. of any Souls game. Oh yeah, in fact, of any Souls game to be fair. Yeah, of any Souls like Bond me. game for those of you who are going to be like, Bloodborne isn't a Souls game? Yeah, it is. Just cry harder. Stop saying it isn't, it is. Just cry harder. It's anyway. not a Souls game in name, it's a Souls game in everything else. Yeah, <laughs> But um, yeah, so prepare yourself for this one. Now this guy does ha uh, uses the Chikage and he uses a repeating uh, a repeater pistol. Yeah, he's so... went. It is essentially fighting a broken blood tinge build that has way more health than anyone on PvP. Yeah, it has like three times as much health as anyone in PvP. So what you're gonna have to do, what you're really gonna have to do is stack your blood defense because that's gonna be the most important thing. His uh, one-handed Chikage attacks aren't that bad. But the two-handed and the repeating pistol really fucking suck. Oh, you're, they really you're are. gonna have to spend probably a few fights learning his combos. He has like a few set moves where he'll dash to use his pistol and he'll dash again and shoot again. Or he'll R1 you with the Chikage and then he'll forward roll and try and pistol shot you and stuff like that. You gotta try and like figure out these combos so you know when to parry him. Normally when he two hands the Chikage, he'll walk up to your face, he'll like try and walk right up into your face and he'll just go for a regular R1. When he stops walking forward, just pull the trigger and you'll normally get the parry like that. You'll be able to work out the timing with a little bit of practice, but you're really going to have to learn this guy's moveset. It's a, it's a really important part of the fight. But before we fight him, we are going to finish off Alfred's quest. Which well, is we're why gonna, we're coming we're gonna, here. We're going to start Alfred's quest. Oh, yeah. So what we're doing right now is we're giving Alfred the unopened Canehurst summons letter. Now what that's going to do is let Alfred go to the Vileblood Queen and you're going to see what he does to her. Now it's remember we picked, up the, we picked up the unopened Canehurst summons letter in the Vileblood Queen boss room. Well yeah, not the boss Vileblood room Queen but chamber. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the table to the right of the Vileblood Queen. Like if you're facing her it's on the table to the right of her. So make sure you grab that before you leave there of course. Um, and we give Alfred that obviously. Remember you need to talk to Alfred at the beginning of the game to get him to move there. Yeah, you have to speak. You have to speak to him um, at the section where you would pull the lever to move the sarcophagus to get into old Yarnum. Yeah, you'd have to speak to him there to move him here. Um, and now that we've given him that, he's gonna he's gonna go to Kanehurst, and we're gonna meet him there later. So this is Eileen. She's obviously completely fucked up because this guy's OP as shit. Yeah. And 
Um, I'm pretty sure he beats the shit out of me here. Um, no, no, I cut out the one where you die. Alright, fair enough. Good, I didn't die. <laughs> He's lying. Oh yeah, tot Tote's lying. See that? Look, there wasn't even a transition, that was perfect. I'm wearing the same clothes, I was wearing the night set when I spoke to Eileen. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I bumped up the blood tinge uh, defence, so I put on the uh, the night set because it's the highest blood defence that I've got right now. But as you can see, this guy's like a really good fight. This guy's a very PvP-esque fight in the fact that he's constantly like pushing on you and shit like that. It's really fun. But he's ridiculously tough and he just does too much damage, to be fair. Now, this guy, when we were using Tron the Tronitus, or yeah, Tonitrus. Tonitrus, right. He, he's very fast and the Tonitrus doesn't attack quite fast enough to be wholly effective. Now, yeah, you've only got one hit in, but the Saw Cleaver combos. Yeah, the Saw Cleaver is actually relatively effective, plus the Saw Cleaver actually has a little bit of range on the transform attacks, which just outranges his Chikage, which means you can obviously use that to your advantage. So, there used to be a cheese for this guy that they got rid of, and if you're having a shitload of trouble, you can try on installing your Bloodborne patch and then cheating. Yeah. But I'd say don't do that, because that sucks. But the way it used to work is that as soon as he two-handed his Chikage, you would run away, because he would never un-two-hand it, and the blood, the uh, self-damage, would just drain him. So he's, he throws Numbing Mist at you, and you definitely want to have Numbing Mist on for this fight as well, because this guy can heal. Um, I've only ever seen him heal once on me. He used to heal more than once before the patch, but I think he never only heals once, although people are saying that he heals twice and stuff like that, but I've never seen it. Um, in this fight, he only heals once as well, and I don't even get to use the, um, the Numbing Mist on him. Uh, when he gets down to about half health, he'll heal. Just make sure, of course, that you're using your Saw Cleaver R1s uh, and L1 combos. You want to get those transform attacks and they do quite a nice bit of damage. Yeah. Um, because you get the bonus. And that was the attack I was talking about where he just walks up into your face in R1s. You can usually get the... Uh, you can trade for the, 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 parry. the parry there, yeah. And take the Visceral. And of course, if you get the Visceral quick enough, when you land a Visceral, if you're missing any health that you can get back with the HP regain mechanic, you'll get it back instantly because the Visceral attack just does that. And I point blanked him with a cannon for 600 damage. Yeah. Oh, worth it. Worth it. So, obviously if you can hit him with a cannon, you're going to do some damage, but you can see that his health is absolutely crazy big. As well as the fact that he actually has, um, he has pretty high blood defense, considering the armor set he's wearing as well. It's the Kanehurst helmet, and he's wearing Eileen's chest, so his blood defense is pretty damn high. So the cannon's damage is already going to be reduced by about 200, at least. Oh yeah, that as well. So, it may not be worth it to use the cannon if you want to go parry heavy, but I just did it to do a huge chunk of damage because he healed on me, so fuck that guy. So you can see that the like R1 transform attacks are going really well here, in terms of being able to keep him at a slight distance as well, because you can hit, hit, he sort of goes far away, you know, so that, there, finally he's dead. Yeah, and you've seen there, I used the Sock Lever Transform L1 there to get the last chunk of damage, just to, just to push him past that magic pixel that Bloodborne loves to throw in your face And uh, we've got a good rune from that, I'm sure. Um, that's yeah, that, that's rapture. Blood Rapture, that's the highest tier of Blood Rapture, I think it is. It uh, restores 300 health on a Visceral attack now, instead of 200 that you got from the Shadows of Yarnum. So it's pretty good. And we've got the Crow Hunter badge, which lets us buy all of Eileen's gear in the store. And we got the Hunter of Hunters rune, which we can apply to our fourth rune slot in the um, in the Hunter's Workshop, and that's the one that gives us constant stamina regen. So if you're a fan of the Claranthi ring, you're probably gonna enjoy the Hunter of Hunters rune. Let's yeah. be honest. And with the speed of Bloodborne, it's probably it is obviously it's the easiest option. You know what I mean? Easy yeah, like I mean, if you have to decide between a fucking Covenant rune, then it's definitely the uh, the the Hunter of Hunters. So after speaking to Alfred and doing that, we came back here, and you can see that Alfred has fucking annihilated. Um, yeah, he his words are like um, yeah. What gives your immortal What gives your immortality now? I'm try stirring up trouble in this story. Uh, this sorry state, all mangled and twisted, with every inside on the outside for all the world to see. So yeah, he just beat the shit out of her with that giant fucking Ligarius wheel to the point where she's just she's a mush. Yeah, she's like human play doh. Pretty much. Now, there, if you have done this guy's quest accidentally and she's died now... Don't worry. Don't worry. She's not perma-dead. You can fix this. Okay? What did you just get off her body there? Um, you get the... It's something remains. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> right, those so remains, remains you use after you defeat Abritus, you can put the remains on the altar that Abritus is standing in front of and she'll yeah. then be back again. Yeah, you can revive the Vital Blood Queen. So that's how you get her back. Mm -hmm. now, now come back to where you first met Alfred, and Alfred will be dead, and you can pick up his rune. Um, 
because he gives you the badge at the Vile Blood Queen, yeah. which lets you buy all of his shit, including the Gold Ordeal. As but well now you have the Executioner's Rune. Oh, and he gives you the Roar Gesture as well, which you should try out because it actually screams and it's pretty fucking cool. And it has a different scream for a male or a female character, which which sounds sounds like that's an obvious thing, but sometimes you'd expect FromSoft to miss something like this. Yeah. I mean, the elevator goes up to the Iron Keep after all. <laughs> they could just patch it and make it go down and that's problem solved. Anyway... Yeah, anyway, that's the end of Kanehurst. Relatively quick episode. We've got all the covenants done as well. So the last thing we need to do now is go through the upper cathedral and then just beat the game. Yeah. So we're at, like, what, two more parts to this guide? Yeah. And that's us done, guys. So, yeah. Let us know if we missed anything, even though I'm 100% sure we didn't. And let us know if you found actually a decent way to take care of the fleas. Um, because fuck the fleas. Yeah. Fuck <sighs> Yeah. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that, guys, and, you know, links on screen, and we'll see you next episode. See you guys later. Bye.